I definitely didn't envisage a film version of my writing when I first started. But when I was writing The Girl on the Train, it was clear to me that it was a very cinematic story. Hi, I'm Paula Hawkins, author of The Girl on the Train, Into the Water, and my new novel, A Slow Fire Burning, and this is Filming My Book. The switch in location from London to New York was, I think, less traumatic for me than it was for a lot of the readers. I didn't mind it too much. Um, for me, the location wasn't the most important thing, but I do understand why people were disappointed. They wanted to see those particular shoddy houses on the way into Euston Station. I did lots of travelling in and out of London. It was actually on the, on the district line, the overground bit, rather than a, a mainline train. But there was a bit where you went really, really close to um, houses and you can actually see into um, people's front rooms. And I did spend a lot of time wondering you know, what would you do or do if you saw something shocking in act of violence or what have you. You could see what, like, where my mind was going. But the upstate location worked in lots of ways. It was very beautiful and very creepy and, and it was cinematic in different ways. And it is just an interpretation. It's not the book. So I wasn't overly upset about that because I think they stayed true to the things that I cared about more, which was about character and about the, you know, the key scenes that, that I was most invested in. The opening scenes are quite similar. They're both Rachel on the train. In the novel, she's looking out at a pair of shoes on the side of the tracks and she's wondering about where did they come from, whose shoes were those. And in the film version, she's actually sketching the shoes. It's sort of accelerated in the film version. She immediately sees Megan. I suppose I started noticing her about a year ago. There's another character, the red-headed man, who's on the train, who's also introduced at a much earlier stage. So it's, it's a similar scene, but it's accelerated, as you might expect. If you're writing first-person narrative, which I did in, in The Girl on the Train, um, you're right inside somebody's head. And without doing an awful lot of voiceover, you can't do that in a film. It would be very boring. The filmmaker has to find some other way to access people's thoughts. Well, I didn't have any particular um, actors or actors in mind for casting. I actually never fantasy cast my books. Uh, Emily Blunt was perfect to play Rachel. That was because of the way she moved and the way she portrayed all Rachel's guilt and shame on her face rather than some sort of physical archetype. So that's the, the really important thing is finding actors who can sort of inhabit the role and I think Justin Theroux did an amazing job of playing Tom where he goes from being really quite vulnerable character at some points. You can see when he, Rachel attacks him that he's actually quite frightened and then he can change just like that into scary and sinister. Um, the character of Martha was, uh, she was expanded rather than introduced. She was um, a twist on a character that was already there, but they, they gave her much more of a role because in the novel, Rachel comes to realize that she's been gaslit in sort of, it happens slowly, it happens sort of in, in a number of small scenes that I could spread out through the course of the novel that you could take your time to make these revelations. That doesn't work for a film. So they needed a more concrete way for, for Rachel to realise that her memories, you know, have been, have basically been tampered with. So they introduced Martha, but, and I think she, she, was a good, she was a nice character in the, the film because you, when you first meet her, you think she's a bit hard, but actually there's a warmth to her that definitely came from the book. She cares about Rachel. She feels sorry for Rachel. She's on Rachel's side. Uh, there, are, there are a number of scenes that are slightly different. There was a, a, a sort of sequence that they introduced that wasn't in the book at all, which is a scene where Rachel goes to a bar. I think it's a Grand Central Station, in fact, and she gets very drunk. And there's a, a scene in the ladies' loo there. Well, it didn't occur in the book in that way, but you're watching Rachel come to a realization about herself and her own behavior, which again in the novel you can do in a, through that direct access to Rachel's thoughts, but because the filmmakers couldn't do that, they had this clever thing where she films herself and then she watches herself afterwards and is appalled by it. And they also had a, a bit of a scene from an AA meeting where she talks about why she feels ashamed. Because I woke up um, covered in blood and I had, I had bruises all over my arm and... Um. Again, I didn't have to have her talk in the novel. You just knew that she felt ashamed. So there were, there were a few um, additional scenes. You can completely see why they're there. They're there to, to tell you things um, that she was only thinking in the book. I think the closing part of the film is quite 
different to the book. Not that the ending is different in terms of who done it or what have you, but there's a different feeling. In the book, it's right at the end that Rachel, um, that Rachel sort of reveals to the reader that Anna was kind of complicit in the murder of Tom and that these, both of them have lied to the police really about what they did. And so they're now sort of tied together in this way. And there's something slightly menacing about that, that Rachel feels slightly threatened by the fact that Anna has her number. In the film, that I think the, the ending is slightly more hopeful. You don't have that, that sense of menace. They went for a slightly less bleak ending than I did. Today, I sit in a different car and I look ahead. Anything is possible. Because I am not the girl I used to be. Um, I didn't. I really didn't know how it would be received. There were some things that slightly uh, surprised me. I was. I spoke to. A, well, it was one of the critics who interviewed me um, at the time of the release, and who said that in the cinema he was in, people cheered when Rachel stuck Tom in the neck with a corkscrew, which was like, oh, that wasn't supposed to be, you know, a punching the air moment, but yes, people are maybe more vicious than I gave them credit for. Thanks for watching. You can buy my new book, A Slow Fire Burning, by clicking the link in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Penguin YouTube channel by clicking the link on the left.